Hello, welcome to your program, Legends of Our Time. On Legends of Our Time, we give great people the opportunity to tell their stories. My name is Gifty Ichi. Today we are hosting a man who for almost all his working life, literally read and at broadcasting. He did broadcasting at a time when there was only one radio station in the country. Those were the days when broadcasting was the monopoly of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. At one point, his name became a household name. His vintage contribution has been recognized through his numerous awards that have been showered on him. I'll take a quick break and when I come back, I introduce my guest for today. My guest for today is Mr. Sam Yeboah. Mr. Yeboah is a veteran broadcaster and he spent most of his working life with the state broadcaster GBC. Mr. Yeboah, it's great and uh, an honor to have you on our program, Legends of Our Time. The same to me, yeah. Thank you. Right. Now tell us, uh, let's begin with your background. Who exactly is Mr. Sam Yeboah? Sam Yeboa mm -hmm. hails from Mamfe Equiapim in the eastern region. region. Born on the 25th of March 1939. And that makes you 80. Yes, I marked my 80th <laughs> birthday just a couple of months ago. Okay. My father was Frederick Kwejo. Kranteng Yeboa, okay. who hailed from Mamfe Equipim, and my mother, Elizabeth mm -hmm. Ajoa Amene Ansa, that was the maiden name, okay. uh, also from Mamfe. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we, you're a typical Mamfe man. That is it, mm -hmm. that is it, yeah. But uh, I, I was born there, but we were not living there. As a matter of fact, my daddy, mm -hmm was working at Manguasi along the Nsuam Kafurudua rail line. And uh, my daddy was a cocoa purchasing agent for a foreign company, huh. English and Scottish Cooperative Wholesale Society. Huh. For short, that company was known as CWS, Cooperative Wholesale Society. <laughs> and uh, he was an agent there. Mm. Unfortunately, if I were a Fante, mm. I think the name that will be appropriately given to me is Antobam. Antobam. Because my daddy died before I attained one year. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. So you weren't pampered? At all. I didn't have that. <laughs> I didn't have that. And mm. I think uh, my mom took very good care of me mm. until she married about five years later. Mm. Were you the only child? I was the only child dad. of my daddy when he died. So my mommy married a second man. Mm. And until I attained the age of about 15, there was nothing to prove to me that the man who married my mom That's your stepfather. was not yeah, my stepfather, was not my real father. Wow. God graciously gave him, mm. yeah, to take the place of my, mm. my, my real father. He looked after me well. Mm. That's good and to know. What is interesting, amazing, mm. surprising, and all that is that when my daddy died, by irony of circumstances, this stepfather, <laughs> on completion of his, I think, middle school, education mm? uh -huh. and looking for a job uh, just was employed 
at the same place where my father was before he died. Wow. It didn't end there. Mm. He looked round, and it's my mom. He <laughs> also got married too. Mm. So he looked after me mm. until when I was growing up, you know, other relatives, elderly people and so on, who knew my father, started asking when they uh, noticed how steadily I was growing, mm. they were pointing to me, is that Cranting son? Mm -hmm. And I heard them responding in the affirmative. And I didn't know Cranting. So I think from age 12, 13, 14 and so on, I started worrying my mom. Mm. Mommy, who is Cranting, Cranting? <laughs> he said, why are you asking me this? I said, in the way I passed mm -hmm. with my uncles and so on, mm -hmm. they were naming Cranting and finding out whether I am Cranting's son. Mm -hmm. On and on and on and on. I think uh, <laughs> my mom realized that I was growing up. And so the she has truth, to tell you the yes. story. Mm -hmm. So she told my grandfather and others, and then they found an appropriate time. To break the news yes. to you. And I remember that day, there was a picture of my daddy in a, a frame, yeah. and it was turned against the wall, so I couldn't see it. Yeah. But at the end of it all, yeah. they rounded up by saying, so uh, the, the, the story is that... This is your father. And then they turned the picture <laughs> and said, yeah, this, this is, is your, your, father, real father. your real father. But he passed on mm. whilst we were very young. That's how I got to know. Yeah. But I said earlier on that there's a replacement who got married to my mom. Was the perfect. He was such a wonderful man. Mm. The name Ohine Mantiao. Ohine Mantiao. He was, I, I don't know how to describe him. I, I told you, I Is never realized, no, he also passed on. And uh, he looked after me, and many people didn't know that... You were the sixth Yes, son. yes, he fathered, no, mm. many people didn't know. Mm. But there is one thing I have to say to you, because one time, you know, the youth, when we are growing up, sometimes we puff up, we think we are growing fast, we are mm -hmm. becoming men, and so on and so forth. I, I did something in the house, I remember it. I've forgotten exactly what, but I think I offended this man. And he wasn't very happy. Mm. So he called me before my mom and complained that he wasn't happy the way I behaved. Mm. And he went on to tell a story that he was offended because not long after he had married my mom, my dead father revealed himself to him in a dream okay. and was pleading with him that before he died, he left an only son behind. He should kindly look after him well for him. This new stepfather accepted this the responsibility and decided he wouldn't fail my father mm. so he did the best he could and i realized it he looked after me paying my fees and so oh dear quite a lot in fact if i want to say a lot about that man <laughs> we wouldn't <laughs> finish this program quite an yeah honest man. yeah mm. so mm. That's, th yeah, that's the short story about my beginning, mm. yeah. But then, when I was, I started class one, if you are going to ask me uh, about... Do you have siblings? Uh, or, yeah. Yes, I have siblings. In fact, uh, when uh, my mom got married mm. to this man, yes, I had six of them. Okay. Three boys and three girls. Wow. Later on, we lost one. Mm. But the rest of them still are alive, alive. yeah. So we number six now, and I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the chief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. Let's talk a bit about your educational background. Edu At what age uh, did you well, start uh, elementary school in through the, to university? Uh, well, um, you know, in our days, if 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 they decided you should go to school, then you were lucky. Some parents didn't like it. I remember when I was six, my mom had wanted to send me to school. 
But because my father was away and it was my granddaddy mm -hmm. who had full responsibility over me, yeah. She told my grandfather I was of age. I needed to go to school. Said, oh, he is not old enough. <laughs> okay, there was nothing my and mom could do. And why did he do. say that? So she, I don't know, no reason. Said I wasn't old enough. Mm. So when I was seven years, my mother didn't seek any permission <laughs> from this old man. <laughs> she went ahead. I had to go to a middle school today. Is it a junior high school? Middle school. I went to form one, form two, and in the third year, I wrote the common entrance examination, and my choice was Premper College. Whoa. Shanti region. And luckily for me, I gained admission to Premper College. So that was in the year 1955. Way I was, back. I was in Form <laughs> 1 at Premper College. Even before independence? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm older than independence. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> I went through until I uh, finished in 1959. Uh, uh, Almost immediately, I, I didn't know what to do. Mm. But we had a headmaster, a British, mm. and I think he had connections because uh, at the end of it, uh, they selected a number of our class who really mm. very well qualified okay. to do the sixth form. The rest of us who couldn't get admission mm. to sixth form and so on, the headmaster arranged with the Quadaso agricultural college college there and also wesley college mm. now any of us who felt he could either be at quadaso or wesley college submit your names mm. and then it will be automatic no examination no interview automatic admission. and that happened to me because mm. i selected wesley college mm. and then and why I, the choice of wesley college well uh, at that time agriculture didn't very much appeal to me. <laughs> so I said, okay, if that be the case, there were two, a Greek teaching. That's why I chose Wesley College, yeah. Okay. And then uh, I was at Wesley College in February of 1960. I tasted it for a term, <laughs> came back on holidays, and, realized and I had a rethinking. <laughs> it wasn't your area. The uncle who picked me from Pakro to Ekropong, <laughs> a teacher, <laughs> Then I have an aunt, also going to be a teacher. Mm. Then I was going to be the third. Why are we packing all <laughs> ourselves into <laughs> teaching? teaching? So I wouldn't. Mm. They convinced me. I said, no, I wouldn't go. Mm. So I was at home thinking of what to do. Somebody who wouldn't like to teach. Mm. Then <laughs> an invitation <laughs> came that I should come to a middle school. Eh? Mm. As a, is it a pupil teacher or supply mm. teacher, they needed one badly. And uh, the headmaster of this middle school was somebody I met when I was in a middle school at Ekropong. Okay. He had come there on transfer. Mm. So he knew me very well. Mm. And then I joined them as a pupil teacher, a supply teacher. Mm. Not that I wanted to stay, of course, no training. But one day, I was in class taking a subject. And then I heard... Uh, there was a big man around. In those days, they were calling them uh, inspectors of schools. Eh? An inspector of school had come. So he came to sit in my class for about 15 minutes. And I really handled my class. I felt a satisfaction in me mm. that I did the best to convince that man mm. I was able to do it. After 15 minutes, he retired to the head teacher's office. Oh, and the next minute, the head teacher himself came to the class mm. and said, uh, Mr. Yabua, please, one minute. And I went to his office. The inspector was there. He greeted me formally mm. and told his story. He said, that what? I have been so much impressed mm -hmm. about the way you handled the subject in class. And which you subject have, was that? I did hygiene. Hygiene. Yeah, mm. hygiene, with the germs and so on and so forth. Then he said, you haven't even been 
to a training college and this is your performance. What happens after you've come out? From after a training you, college. Yes. So please listen. I have decided with the headmaster, mm. think of all the training colleges in Ghana. <laughs> Pick one. Mm. You wouldn't go for an interview. Mm. You wouldn't write an exam. Mm. You go there straight, straight away. to have a formal training, training. to become a teacher. Mm. I said in my heart, oh, Papa, you don't know. <laughs> I selected one. I went to Wesley College. I've decided I won't go again. So please, nothing not, can not convince me. Mm -hmm. When I said this, he said, okay, I'll leave the matter with you. Think the headmaster is round. Go and have a rethinking. Mm -hmm. If you decide that now you would like to be a teacher, mm -hmm. come and tell him. We'll still mm -hmm. you know, you. allow you to enter a training college. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work. <laughs> so eventually, I came to Accra for about a year or so. I was at the... To visit a, a relative or you came on your own? No, 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 no. no. I had then <laughs> written some applications looking for work. Oh, okay. So and you then, came following up yes, on those applications? Yes. And then uh, one of them answered. And that was the Customs Excise and Preventive Service. Wow. It was the first, so I said, okay, let me grab this one. I don't know whether the rest will answer me or not. <laughs> then I joined Customs, Excise, and Preventive Service. Mm. Before GBC? Before GBC. Mm. And then I did one and a half years at the airport as Assistant Revenue okay. Officer. On and on and on and on. You see, I was with the preventive side. We were checking, smuggling, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But after a while, uh, it was a decision that <coughs> that part of customs mm. should be drafted into the Ghana police service. I said, uh-uh. So no. which meant it could land you yeah, I into said, the police service? Yes, I said I knew the existence of the police service, and I knew customs. <laughs> and so, no, no, I wouldn't go. It was there and then that I said, ah, when I was in school, I enjoyed radio. Any time I heard people announcing those rediffusion boxes, mm -hmm. they would, yes, I'll go to the common room, stand by, and listen to people mm. delivering. And I was admiring the work. So I said, okay, if I'm not joining the police, why not broadcasting still? Mm. So I started... Mr. Your boy, you know what? At this point, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk everything about uh, GBC. Right. So hold your fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, right. <laughs> anyway, you're watching Legends of Our Time. And uh, today my guest is Mr. Sam Yeboah, the veteran broadcaster. My name is Gifty A.J. I'll take a quick break. When I come back, we'll talk more. Please stay. Welcome back. You're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC 24 on Legends of Our Time. We talk to great people who make all of us happy. And today my guest is Mr. Sam Yeboa. He's a veteran broadcaster and then he worked here at GBC. So I'll go back to him and then we'll continue our discussion. So finally, you came to GBC. Yes, I did. And I learned you are one of the longest serving people uh, that worked at GBC. Uh, for how long did you stay with the state broadcaster? Uh, altogether, I stayed very close to 37 years. Ooh. Yeah, 36 plus. But yeah. you're supposed to work for 30 years, or? No. Nope. Okay. It, it depended on your age at okay. the time that you enter. Okay. Yeah. I was about 22, 23. Mm. when I first entered broadcasting. Mm. So mm. I had the rest up to 60 years.
to work for GBC. Mm -hmm. So by calculation, it was 36 plus. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's great. Yeah. And so finally, you got the opportunity to work with GBC. Yes, I did. And uh, when you were employed, what kind of brief were you given? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> yes, uh, after uh, an interview. The interview took the form of uh, uh, what we call a translation, original form in English. Mm. And then I was made to translate it into my local language, which is tree. Gee. Immediately I finished the translation, I was put behind the microphone and said, now read aloud mm. to our hearing and let's see. I think it was when I did it, mm. and they found that I had a good voice for the work, mm. that they noted me. But they didn't tell me there and then. Mm. When I finished, they said, you'll hear from us. Okay. Yeah. So eventually... I had a letter go for a medical exam, mm. and immediately you finished report at Broadcasting House. Mm. So I did. When I joined GBC at first, it's so funny. You see, I went through administration. The administration handed me over to the presentation department, okay. and then to the presentation manager, a very firm lady, disciplined lady? Uh, Mrs. Susie Laie. Before joining GBC, she was also a strict headmistress <laughs> of her school. Okay. Yes, yes, a disciplinarian indeed. So I joined them, and the next three weeks, I wasn't sure whether I was in broadcasting <laughs> to do any broadcasting or something. You know what I did? No. They took me to a corner where they had arranged, not arranged, I don't know, mm -hmm. so many files and papers with a lot of dust collected on them. Three weeks, I was cleaning them. I said, what? I said, I wanted to come to <laughs> read you. <laughs> what is this job that you are giving mm -hmm. to me? And they knew it will worry me. So mm -hmm. they called me in the second or so week. And then they said, Sam, don't get worried at all. Eh? Mm -hmm. Normally, when you begin like this, mm -hmm. you have a feeling we don't need you. We need you. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be for a short period. Indeed, at the end of the third week, I was called and said, Sam, as from next Monday, you are joining a shift. Okay. Then they gave me a shift. Mm. So I became a shift worker there and then. Mm. But any time I was on duty, there was a roster, a special roster. Mm. I had to go to the training school to see the officer in charge there okay. to start speech and voice training, training. phonetics and so on. Mm. And I had the good luck of having a very nice lady, a foreigner. Mm. In fact, uh, she was a Polish, but she naturalized to become British. Okay. She was very good. And I spent two hours with her every time that I was on duty. And it went on for, I think, about eight weeks or so. And when she felt I was okay, yeah. she recommended me to the presentation manager okay. that at least for the basic training, mm. I was okay. To go on air. To go on air. Mm. So I stopped the training for a while and joined my shift. Mm. One week, two weeks, one month, nobody had called me to say anything. <laughs> and at the time that I was doing this, there was another lady. We entered GBC about the same time called Harriet Techimenson. Okay. She was also reporting at the training school. Mm. So when both of us finished, each time we met, we were not in the same shift, but each time we met on the compound, I said, Sam, mm. so when are we going on air? I said, ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> we, were eager. We were know. eager, and we were not being. So mm. one time, it was uh, during uh, the morning break. Mm. I don't know whether you know this, uh, on radio, mm. in our time, we started at 5.30 a.m. in the morning, okay. but by 8 o'clock in the morning, we closed down mm. and did all sort of things, recording this, that, 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 that. And then about a quarter to 12, mm. we came back. So during that long break, I don't know where exactly I was. Then I heard Sam, 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 what is happening? He said, you are wanted, you are wanted. <laughs> Mrs. Lai wants you. Oh, what have I done? Mm. Then I came. Sam settled down there. Continuity announcer, eh? wow. duty continuity announcer, DCA. Mm -hmm. So settle down. This afternoon, eh, you are going to open the station. Wow. And that's how you are going to begin. And, and how did you no feel? No warning. Mm. No warning at all. Mm. And 
<laughs> I went and sat down. This lady too wouldn't leave. She stood there conducting. Sam, be cool, relax, mm -hmm. look at the green light, and this and that and that. Mm -hmm. So at certain times, I didn't know whether I should watch what <laughs> I was going to read or I should watch this lady. <laughs> Until I started hearing the drum. Wow. You know that one. Mm. So the green light came and I started. Mm -hmm. And when I finished, it was the program parade. Do you still remember the exact, you know, words that you, you said oh, when, well. when the lights came on? Well, normally this is the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. The time is this, that, that, that. Mm -hmm. Here is the program, mm -hmm. uh, you know, outline mm -hmm. between now and 10 o'clock thereabout when yeah, we close down. Mm -hmm. At 12 this, 1 o'clock this, that, blah, 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 blah. You said all these things. Mm -hmm. And then the other programs followed. So not long after that, some of my colleagues came giving me a part. In those days, these rediffusion boxes were in all the offices. So the moment you started, the broadcast mm -hmm. went, everybody heard it. Mm -hmm. So those people who heard it knew I was a newcomer, but they thought I did well. Mm -hmm. So they were commending me highly through the old hands there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was very happy and on and on and on and on and on. That was the basic training. Hmm? Yeah. So you started as a duty continuity announcer, making short announcements, mm. the time is so and so, we broadcast this, that was that program. Mm. Now all the you know, relevant announcements, mm. keeping listeners in touch mm. of what is coming to them from the station. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you were a narrator. You had to read some talk programs, some scripts, magazines, mm. documentaries, and so on. But you never touched the news. You were wow. not yet there. Okay. Yes, there is a special training for mm. news for readers. News. Yeah. So, so at what point did you become a news reader? I went through all this gradually, gradually, gr until September of 1964. Wow. I had to attend a very short course at the training school again to mm. polish me well mm. to become a news reader mm. and at the end of it a recommendation was made mm. and i heard the then head of the external service ah he <laughs> wrote a wonderful recommendation on my file mm. and some of my seniors who saw it told me mm. and i started as a news reader 64 mm. september and i was posted to the external service of GBC. Yeah. Yes, I was on the external service of GBC. And there I was reading the news. And I had a personality program too. Okay. At first it was country and western songs from the Golden West. And I was playing <laughs> cowboy and country numbers, mm. you know, until a time when my attention was drawn that some, uh, this is Ghana. And the external service broadcast to the outside world. Mm. So if you continue playing country music mm. and then uh, these cowboy songs and so on, it's like sending coal to Newcastle. <laughs> so let us revise what we are doing. Mm. Send to these people something. Our culture. Uh -huh, something that is it. Yes. Mm. So I changed even the title. It was no more country and western, mm. but I said mine for your enjoyment. <laughs> yes. And then on and on and on and on and on. And mm -hmm. that is it. So mm -hmm. I, I was then working on the external service mm -hmm. uh, from 63 to 65, 66, thereabout, until the coup. So yeah, the coup, the coup of 1966. Mm -hmm. I was on the external service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the coup, but. Uh, uh, as a, a presenter for radio, uh -huh. you also read for TV. Oh, yes, gradually. Yes, it mm. came to that time. Mm. Yeah, when I started as a radio announcer, mm. it was radio. Even at that time, you know, I, I'm older than TV. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, yes, because when TV was about to be inaugurated at GBC, uh, m my boss, for instance, the late Mrs. Lai, mm. they said internally we were recruiting our staff before we extended to outsiders. Mm. So uh, I, I hadn't submitted my name. And then the late Madame Fa Sam, I still haven't seen you yet. Or you are not interested mm -hmm. in going over to TV. I said, no, Madame. I said, why? I said, I love radio. 
I don't want to go to TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is why, it. Why, why radio but not TV? I don't know why. I can't explain it. <laughs> Maybe it's because I knew radio and I decided to join radio. Mm. And radio had then become my friend. Your baby. Yeah. The so, passion was for radio. Yeah, it was so strong. Mm. So I said, okay, I'll remain here. Yeah, she expressed some surprise. I said, okay, all right. So I stayed, uh, you know, at radio until much later, mm. much, much later. In fact, uh, when I started performing on TV, I think it was in 1972 or so. Yeah, 72. Then I added television to my work. Yeah. Otherwise, external service. But even before I joined TV2, you know, it was at that time that they started the commercial radio service. We named it GBC2. Mm. And then uh, there was a selection uh, interview. They needed just a few of us to start it because they said we were going to, uh, what we call, uh, raise revenue for the corporation. So they need, need not employ so many so that the money would be shared among many people. But few people to come with lots of money. So we were only six. The f we were the first six to open up the uh, commercial service. Mm. And uh, one thing, you see, I had been reading the news. The news reading is a very formal thing. You mm. need to be very polished. Mm? Yeah, and then do it well. It had been in me. Now, they said we should do this commercial work. Commercial work, you need a selling voice, a voice that is rough. And my, my voice was wasn't smooth. rough at all. Yeah. It mm. was the serious one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> very, very serious <laughs> for news. Mm. So I remember in my early days as a commercial <laughs> announcer, I was put in a studio to record an advert mm. on one of these products, either uh, Lux Toilet Soap or something. Mm. And a white man, a British subject, he kept me in the studio rigidly for about 20 to 30 minutes. One <laughs> advert. And he wasn't satisfied. He mm -hmm. said, take it up. I said, take one. Mm -hmm. Then we traveled through to, I think, take 10 and so on and so forth. Okay. It was about 1.30. I did the morning, you know, Means. duty. Mm -hmm. And I was closing at 2 o'clock. So I was tired and hungry. So I was getting even annoyed with the man. Mm -hmm. Then the man said... I'm sorry, Sam. You see, your not, voice. He, yeah, he said, not that you are not good, but you're not cut you, no, 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 no. You are too polished. That is, <laughs> yeah, that is what he said. Mm. He said, not that you are not good, but you are too polished. Mm. We need a rough voice, yeah, like you know, come to our local people who are selling a big <laughs> and so that kind of thing. Mm. So apply something like that to your voice, and it will be okay. Otherwise, your voice, you know, yeah. So, in fact, somebody else did it. And he was able to do it. He wasn't a news reader. Okay. Uh -huh. So he did it better than I did. Let's talk more on TV. Um, can you remember your first time on air? I know TV, as compared to radio, can be a bit intimidating. The lights, the people, the cameras. So, for you, as a young reader, your first time on TV, what was the experience like? Well, there was a, a change in a way, a difference, mm. like you said, because uh, in a radio studio where nobody sees you, you can do your own thing, provided the sounds really go the way it should go. But with all these lights and so on and so forth, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, if you are fresh, it will disturb you. But I think I have to say that because I had then spent quite some time in GBC okay. and I knew about how it was done and so on, mm. it didn't scare me so much. The only disturbance right from the beginning was that I expected somebody to invite me, lead me through it for about a day or so. Mm. It wasn't done. All of a sudden, my name was on the roster <laughs> to report and do the news on TV. I went to a newsroom, went through the preparations and so on. Mm. Then I sat down 
I look to the left and right. <laughs> Where is the green light going to come from? And so on and so forth. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, the drums were on. And then they cued me. Okay, you cued <laughs> me. The only thing is that I'm appearing <laughs> on a camera. Mm. But as for the sounds, mm. it should be the same. Yeah. So I did it. Mm. And from then on, I think I became accustomed you know, to the practice. And it didn't worry me so much. Uh, People started asking me questions. So all these things, they come from your head. <laughs> they didn't know how I was working mm. eh, with the pedals down there in our days. Your days. Uh -huh. Today we are using the yes, OTQ. Yes, yeah, that is easier. it in our days. You have to be doing this and that and that and that and that, yeah. So, well, that is it. So I don't think I had any problems at all, but mm. if uh, I should tell you a story. <laughs> tell us. About... Mm. Mm what happened to me <laughs> early in 1982 mm -hmm. there what had happened? been there had been this uh, revolution in ghana yeah. and we had uncle jerry <laughs> in broadcasting house mm. he did a broadcast to the nation mm. and he was followed by so many people he was joined at GBC by our then acting director general, mm -hmm. Professor Kwame Kakari. Okay. And they had finished, Uncle Jerry had finished the broadcast. Mm -hmm. But his retinue, people who followed me, were still around him in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I was the reader that evening. Wow. So getting to about 15 minutes to time, the editor in chief, the editor on duty rather, sent one of his uh, young men, please go and humbly mm. tell our chairman mm, <laughs> that if he had finished, mm. we require that he, he should leaves. give us a chance. Mm -mm. If he preferred to be there, then we are asking him and his people to be quiet mm. because very soon the news will be on. Mm. I was praying that he would just say, thank you, and then leave. Mm. The man came and said, you know what he said? Nope. He said he would remain there, so we can come and do our own thing there. <laughs> then my heart started beating faster pum, than normal. Pum. <laughs> okay, then quickly, I went and did my makeup, makeup. Yeah, put on my cloth. As soon as I entered the studio, hey, the lights were on, mm -hmm. and our uncle, the room was you know his complexion, mm. brightened the place like that, adding to the glamour of the place. I bowed and sat <laughs> down. The news started. I felt I was hanging, not sitting on my <laughs> chair. I was worried. Because of his presence. Yes. The mm. first three minutes, I was actually hanging. <laughs> my buttocks was not on the seat. What is this? Were you fumbling? No, 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 no. Eh, no fumbling, mm. but I was a bit nervous by mm. his presence because he was looking straight into my face mm. by the camera there. Then I spoke to myself. I said, oh, but long before our uncle came, I had been reading. doing my thing. So I'm going to prove to you all that <laughs> I can do the work. Then you I delivered. sat down and felt I had sat down. Mm. And I prayed to Queen Elizabeth <laughs> to help me in using her language properly. Mm. And I did it without a slip. Wow. At the end of it, I bowed <laughs> and said, I'll come again later. Mm. Quickly, I left to the uh, makeup room mm. and I was going to change. As soon as I threw off the cloth, and it was on a pair of trousers anyway, you know it. Yeah, yeah with, Yes, we, we do it on our... This, Immediately, I threw the cloth off my shoulder. There was Professor Kwame Kakari. Sam, the mm -hmm. chairman would like to meet you. I said, what wow. wrong did I do? Mm -hmm. What <laughs> wrong did I do? Huh? Ah. I said, all right, please, allow me. I I'm putting on my shirt. I'll mm -hmm. be coming soon. He said, put on the cloth. The cloth and come. You think he doesn't know you put on the cloth over a pair of trousers. Mm -hmm. He knows all these things. So please, hurry, hurry and let's go. So, Professor waited for me until I put on the cloth, and then I started following him. About a meter or so away from chairman, he started moving towards me. I said, today, you are dead. 
<laughs> he came so close with outstretched arms like this. And was it an embrace? He, he pressed me and I hardly could, could breathe. Mm. Oh, I was struggling, Papa. Ooh, piano. <laughs> you see? And then I was there and he started showering praises. Wow. You people are doing exceptionally wow. well. Well done. And wow. I was struggling for breath there. <laughs> And it was a long thing. <laughs> wow. Until finally he released me. Mm. I was <laughs> breathing like that. Anyway, he was so happy. He was so there. So at to that see. point, what was going through your mind? Oh, I was uh, happy that, you know, such a fellow, hmm? I should meet him. I hadn't met him so close like that. Mm. He had never touched me. So he embraced me and congratulated me for the work that I did. Mm. When I came back and I was telling my story, I said, you know what happened to me? Hey, the chairman had embraced me. So, hmm, because of that one, for the next three days, I'm not going to take my bath. Hey. I want all the warmth and everything to remain with me. I won't. And we all had a big laugh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Yeboah, yeah. from all that you've said, yeah. it means you became very famous. How did you handle the fame? Uh... As a matter of fact, I am very modest in my way. Mm. I, I don't brag, show off, and so on. But young boys and girls, the people who were watching and so on, mm. they could shout at my name and so on and mm. so forth. But letting people know that, yes, I am Samuel. But no, I don't do that. I don't do that at all. Mm. I had so many letters from far and near. Mm. Some students even were finding out from me which university I, I, I attended because they would like to attend that university one day mm. and all sort of things. Mm. So, uh, okay, I cherished it, but uh, I, I, I was only happy when a certain category of people praised me, not my classmates and my family men and so on. Okay. There was one uh, chief justice, Justice Apalu. Okay. My performance pleased him so much <laughs> that he was sending me messages. Oh, wow. He was happy. There was one lecturer at Legon. He said, as for that, your man, Sam Yeboa, <laughs> whether I'm in the bedroom, mm. my sitting room, the kitchen, wherever, if he reads because of clarity, I am able to pick whatever he says. Mm. He was so happy about that. These and other things rather pleased me, mm. but not classmates, this, that, 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 that. Yeah, so that's it. Mm -hmm. So did women worry you? Oh, I wouldn't say women worried me at all. No, no women worried me. And I didn't worry any woman. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is that uh, GBC, for instance, I have humor, mm. one thing with me. Okay. But at the same time, I am a very strict disciplinarian. Okay. If you don't do what you are supposed to do the right time and the right way, mm. then you can't move with me. But if you do it right, as expected of you, then we can live nicely and we will laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no problems at all with women and so on, yeah. Mm. I'll be in their company, we will laugh. Mm. Some people gave me names. In fact, I wasn't called Mr. Yeboa. Mm. They said Mr. Yabo. <laughs> ah, well, yes, yeah, some of them were <laughs> calling me Mr. Yabo. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's about it for mm. TV. Yeah, TV. So now that you are at home on mm -hmm. pension, what is it that you miss so much about GBC? Um... This question, I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been watching TV, your newscasters and so on and so forth. But you see, one thing that keeps on worrying me, these days I decided not to let it worry me so much. You see, when I was at the training school, mm. I was on my people all the time. If I heard something, not well done, okay. mispronunciations and so on and so forth, yes. I'll invite you to my office and then discuss it and mm. so on, yeah. And uh, you see, it's a profession. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe that anything that is a profession like that need to be done the professional way. Yeah. W these days, if I listen and judge, what is missing is that I don't think, strictly speaking, there is somebody like Sam Yaboa who is on people's toes. Mm. If you don't do it right, hmm? yeah. It took some time for me to understand the difference between reading and communication. If you read, then it means you're educated, you see the word, you spell it, and you mention it. Then you are reading, literal. You mm. don't convey any meaning, no sense, but you are reading. Okay. It took some time for me to understand it. Then, if you are communicating, in our days we say, <laughs> if you are given anything, eh, even if it were the news or any, any, any script for reading, you must try as much as possible to lift the talk from the script. You okay. understand? Mm. Lift it. It is a talk. Mm. So let it sound like you are talking. Instead Don't let it sound reading, like you are reading. Are reading. Some of them are yet to understand it and put it into practice. I mean, if you read, the sense doesn't come. The effective use of the voice, you see, you liken it unto a musical instrument. Mm. If you don't know the notes and you try to play it, I mean, there will be no harmony, nothing sweet out of it. Okay. Yeah, the okay. same thing, you must apply your voice. The voice is a tool of communication. And then, if you have the medium as English, yeah. then you must put the two together and let people hear you as talking to them, yeah. as telling them a story, as speaking, yeah. but not literally reading to them. Yeah. That's not good enough. Yeah. yeah. So, in broadcasting, one does not stop learning. Learning goes on and on and on and on and on. Hmm? Yes. So that is it. So I feel uh, these and a few other things. Hmm? Mm. People must be practicing. People must be put on their toes. Yeah, mm. you didn't do it well. Let us do it, and so on and so forth. Okay. You, you must have teachers. Hmm? Uh, when I retired, I think for the next ten years or more, I was still being asked to come and train people at the training school, mm. and it's not in GBC. Ever since I retired, I have gone round outside Accra mm. to train people. I have taught at GIJ for about 10 years or so as a, what do we call, a, 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 what do we call, a part-time lecturer. Okay. Yes, a part-time lecturer and so on. So, uh, yes, I listen to you, but I feel those who are doing it are trying, but they haven't reached the top yet. Okay. They need to be working hard so that we listen to them as communicators. They communicate. They don't read to us. Mm? Okay. We were using an expression at the radio training school when I was there. I said, if you do that, it will mean like collecting words and throwing them to the faces of your viewers and say, here are the words, sort them out and let them make sense to you. That's for <laughs> me, I finished my work. And that isn't how you do it. Okay, mm, Mr. Yeah. Samuyebo, I yeah. think we'll take our next break and then when we come back, we'll talk. Right. More. You're still watching Legends of Our Time. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Please stay. Welcome back. You're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC 24. My name is Gifte E.G. and my guest for today is Mr. Sam Yeboa, the veteran broadcaster. Now, Mr. Yeboa, so I know as a, a trainer at the training school, you know, how easy or difficult to mold a reader to become of standard? Well, first and foremost, um, you need to have 
uh, a very good voice by nature. Mm? Okay. If by nature you have a very nice voice, uh, uh, devoid what, what kind of, of voice would you describe? Yeah, as a some nice people voice? have uh, impediments in their speech. They can, they don't know, or they can't say their R's and their L's and so on. They lisp. Mm? Okay. Some people are very, very fast speakers. Okay. Hurriedly, you can hear them. Mm? Mm. But if by nature your voice is quite okay, if you are a man, mm. we expect that when you speak, we should identify you as a man. Okay. Not when uh, we say a man is speaking, but the voice is either childlike <laughs> or a female voice. <laughs> that isn't good enough. Okay. On the other hand, too, if you are a female, mm. we must know, oh, yes, this is a nice female voice. Not that when you open your mouth, you say, oh, this is a man talking. Okay. By the time you realize it's a woman, it's a woman. Mm. some of these things. Okay. Now, if these are there, mm, and then the sound mm, is so pleasant to the ear, okay. we'll put you to the microphone and we'd like to hear the sound coming from you. If it's so pleasant to the ear, then it means 50% you okay. are okay. Then you are to be trained. For instance, if it's in English, English has its sounds. You don't speak English anyhow. Yeah. It has got its sounds and rules and regulations. Yeah. So first and foremost, you have to go through phonetics. Many people, I put this simple question, have you heard phonetic, the word phonetic? He said, yes, what is the <laughs> meaning? This, that, they can't. <laughs> All right, we go round about it and I let them know that phonetics is just a branch of language that deals with speech sounds and the symbols representing these sounds. Hmm. Now, it is these sounds in phonetics which should be used when you are speaking English, yes. Otherwise, any sound you introduce yourself, it's not English. So wow. I take you through phonetics. Yeah. And then in phonetics, you have the single vowel sound, the double, and then the triphthongs, and okay. so on and so forth. A whole lot. Phonetics is not an easy lesson. Mm? It is broadened when you go to the university. I never went there to do mm -hmm. it. I did mine at GBC Training School. Mm? Okay. So you go through all these. And then you go through reading, practice, exercises, and we listen all the time, effecting corrections, and so on and so forth, gradually. Mm. Uh, in fact, my course on this takes normally eight weeks. If you are very good, I assess you. Sometimes I limit it to six weeks okay. if I find that you are really good. And then uh, we start. It's a journey. And the moment we start, I tell you, uh, now I'm passing your voice through mm -hmm. a refinery. So the end product mm. is a refined voice. And then we start. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I spend time. I enjoy doing it. Yeah. And most and of... And you trained um, big stars like Barbara Gacy, Afushika... Barbara Gacy. If I should tell <laughs> you about Barbara Gacy, I was posted to the training school in September of 1985. Wow. There were two ladies... I started with Barbara Gezi of today, then Barbara Sam. Barbara Sam. And then there was another one called Williet. Okay. She didn't stay. Not long after I had finished the course, she left. <laughs> yes. So, yes, I trained Barbara, Barbara mm. Gezi mm. later on. Is he now your acting yeah. DTV? But she's the head of news now. All right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Ebenezer, I'm probably... Pabin is the deputy... Uh, yeah, yeah, TV. I trained on Pabing too, yeah. And there were others, many. I just can't even remember the names. Before I let you go, let's do a quick analysis of the media today. What will be your, your grading of the media? Are you happy with what we are doing? The media in general, not GBC. If I should do a general thing, uh, some of them are doing exceedingly well. Okay. What I don't like, you see, uh, if some people are doing it right and others are spoiling it, that's my worry. Uh, when we talk about those who are using English in doing it, only English, hmm, you are doing exceptionally well. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, doing exceptionally. But there are many of them who feel because uh, they've been allowed to do it dual language, English and I can, sometimes... 
I get annoyed mm -hmm. about the things I hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, I must so be So how very... can we correct that problem? Well, let me tell you, when I retired at first, I spent time going around and said I was free. So now I can assist. But what I realize is that <laughs> some of the people that I have spent time to train and they were good, like in football, they were using money as bait. <laughs> After all, how much are, are they giving you? They come, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, and so on and so forth. People don't want training to spend money in training. But those who took it seriously or who were lucky to have been trained by me, hmm? uh, Doreen Ando. Okay. Yes, I thing. trained her at uh, what we call uh, Joy. Hmm. There is a young man now. He's no more a young man. <laughs> Emmanuel Adbuaji Yuafe, he's also a joy. Okay. When I trained him at GBC, Emmanuel Adbuaji, he was 19 years. And wonderful enough, 19 <laughs> years, he topped the class at mm. that time. He, he has been my boy. Wow. And then Kwame Sefa Kai, I met at uh, Radio Gold. Yeah. And I can mention on and on and on and on. <laughs> I can't even remember. As for uh, Silicon. Yeah, Silicon. And then Thelma, yeah, Thelma. <laughs> and others. Eh? Mm. Uh, Mumen. Mumen. Adna, yeah. Yeah. These days when I say I'm mentioning <laughs> names, I can't. <laughs> there are many. There yeah. are many. KKD and others. Oh, we lost uh, Mefua yes. Kunedu. Mm. Yes, Mefua Kunedu. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, she was at the training school. A very humble fellow. Very decent. I admire her so mm. much. Yes. And who? Many, many. I have trained so many. Mm. Inside and outside. Mm. Yeah. When uh, uh, Professor Kwame Kakari was in charge of, uh, is it Media Foundation Media for Foundation West Africa? For West yes. Africa. Uh -huh. They employed a number of us to go around and train people. I was sent to Axim, uh, Ancobra FM. I trained people there. I came to Aguna Suedro, uh, Golden Star FM. Mm. Then I went to Wright FM. Eh? So many. I've also been to Dynamite FM, Takwa, mm. so on. I, I, apart from GBC, I've trained people to a TV3. Okay. Yeah, yes, both radio and uh, uh, television. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So th there are quite a number of them. Number there of are them. quite a number of them. Please, what would you say has been the highlight of your profession? You've started it already by training other people to get to a certain level, but what? Would, would you say has been other areas that you haven't talked about? If I have to say a few things about my life as a broadcaster, not necessarily in my, the training department and so maybe courses, not internally, but perhaps and some of outside. Your awards yeah, too. you know, yeah. Uh, the first one wasn't actually a course which I attended, but I went on secondment. Mm. Yeah, program exchange. Mm. And I went to Radio Deutsche Welle okay. in Cologne. Germany. But I was there for 20 months. 20 months. I joined the English language department of the Africa service mm. of Radio Deutsche <laughs> Welle. Mm. And I was doing almost the same things which I was doing in Ghana before I joined them. Okay. Some of the people thought I was there to learn. Mm. I was a novice. I didn't know broadcasting, <laughs> which annoyed me. Sometimes I picked <laughs> quarrels with them. I said to them and said, no, <laughs> I did 15 years in Ghana before joining you people here. Whoa. Yeah, so uh, don't, don't, don't play with me at all <laughs> <laughs> if you play with me. And uh, the, the, the one thing I would like to say about mm. that stay is when my immediate boss, the late Mr. Felix Sejafa, was on his round. He toured one or two stations outside Ghana, and he landed in Germany. The time he called at the office, my office in Germany, Cologne, mm. I was off, not on duty. Mm. So he met the assistant uh, head of the program. He was an Indian naturalized uh, German. Okay. He met him. Where is Sam? He said, Sam, that's for your boy, Sam. <laughs> he knows his work here, so he doesn't <laughs> take any nonsense from anybody. That was what he told Mr. Sejafa. Mm. He was so proud and happy. Wow. So when eventually we met, he said, shake my eye. Then I shook him. Mm. He said, this is the testimonial I have had from <laughs> Noshe. He says, you don't take any nonsense from anybody in this office. Yes, that is it. 
So it is that, that learn it. Anything that you want to do it, come all out. Do it well. Mm. Uh -huh. And demonstrate confidence in what you are doing. Mm. And you can go through. Mm? Mm. Yeah. And people respected me. Mm. Yes, people respected me for what I know. Okay, I did a, a course at the BBC. And okay. then uh, <laughs> I did the general production course. Mm. At the end of it, we topped it up with the trainer's course, training the trainer. Mm. So it got to a point that each of the participants should demonstrate his skills in imparting knowledge. They were recording it, and the training coordinator was by the machine. Mm. When it got to my turn, and I started, the man forgot to man the machine. Mm. <laughs> and when Why? He, huh? Why? He said he was so much engrossed in what I was doing. Mm. I mean, a Ghanaian. <laughs> Then the topic I chose was using English mm. as a second language and all the requirements. So he sat down <laughs> listening to me, teaching them <laughs> what <laughs> you are supposed to do. Yeah. So he apologized that if you find any gaps, it's my fault. Mm. Uh, I couldn't. So mm. they advised me. They said, sir, you've done so well. But one thing we fear for you, mm. your head your hands, <laughs> every part of your body is doing the work. So mm. please, when you get back to Ghana, be careful about your health. I said, I thank you very much. But back in Ghana, I don't have the overhead projector. Mm. I hardly <laughs> use the flip chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are some of the things, yeah. So your, your way of talking, is this something which is inbuilt or you learned it over the years? Over the years. Okay. Over the years, I learned all these. I had a clean voice, but how to manipulate it, you see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The voice is yours, mm. but then, like playing an instrument, mm. eh, using your voice and the notes and so on, mm. use your voice. If you sound monotonous, nobody enjoys what you are saying. Okay. So there should be variation, up and down and so on and so forth. Then it becomes, what we say, colorful. You mm. put in color, that's what we say. If you put in color, people enjoy you. Mm. But if you sound so dull, mm, and then you whine, people don't enjoy what you are saying. Mm. So over the years, I think I've acquired, and I like listening to the BBC very well, listen to those who do it so well. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm. that's mm. how it is. Uh, mm. Tell us a bit about your nuclear family, your wife and children. Yeah, I got married to... A young lady mm -hmm. uh, in 1977. And out of that marriage, we have three children. Two of them, Dorothy, the second, Frederick. The two of them are in the United States right now. <clears throat> the third one is this young man around, Benedict. Yeah, we've been blessed with three kids. Mm -hmm. So that's it for my married life mm. so far and uh, we are enjoying <laughs> the evening <laughs> of my life now yeah <laughs> so, so the kids are some of them into your kind of profession not yet no not yet. no they are doing their own thing outside yeah nobody has taken it uh, this one i don't think he's going to do <laughs> he only did the national service okay. at gbc but he hasn't indicated that mm. uh, he should do it but i don't know whether I'm going to encourage uh, him to go into yeah, broadcasting. Because if I don't like people to go into teaching, teaching, <laughs> why should you do broadcasting, broadcasting? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's unfortunate, but <laughs> it isn't like it, it used to be in our days. Mm? Mm. Yeah. We, we started complaining many years ago, long before I, oh, as for life here, we will leave and go and find some other job, and so mm. on and so forth. But on and on and on and on, we stayed until we attained the age of 60. These days, I keep on hearing, oh, daddy, <laughs> uh, these days things have become worse. And this and that. I'll so leave. <laughs> well, I don't know what you may mm. have to say. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's still better. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So age 80, and you, you look very strong and handsome. Uh, so uh, what has been your secret? What have you been doing currently that you still look so nice Correctly. and fresh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or your I secret? To your I don't have any secrets. Mm. I don't have any secrets. Uh, in life, I am not a womanizer. Mm. 
Okay. I don't follow women. I like them, their company and so on, but not the other side. Uh, I'm not a smoker of any kind. Okay. And the, these alcoholic beverages, I stay away from them. Mm. Mm -hmm. I stay away from them. The only thing I know I don't do well is <laughs> regular meals. My woman always blames me, you mm -hmm. see. Most of the time, she is away at work. And when she isn't around, mm -hmm. either I find it so lazy mm -hmm. to get to the <laughs> kitchen quickly, prepare something to eat and so on. So she comes, have you eaten? I said, mm -hmm. not yet. It's a yo, mm -hmm. you see. But uh, yes. Uh, What's your favorite food? Oh, you can guess. <laughs> Fufu. Yes, <laughs> yes, I like fufu. You see, at first I like fufu and palm nut soup mm -hmm. uh, all along. But it's only when I got married, mm -hmm. I started giving preference to the light soup. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, fufu is my first uh, meal. Mm -hmm. Yes, apart from that, I, I enjoy um, pissy, uh, yam, and then plantain. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what? And kutumri. Contemporary, yes, 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 and then uh, what do we call uh, garden eggs? Garden too, eggs. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, as for rice, once in a while, up to, you know, it's only in recent times that I take rice, rice, right? but I thought uh, <laughs> rice isn't a heavy meal. Mm? Mm, mm. But I like uh, banku and okra yeah. soup, yes, <laughs> but my number one is food. Fufu. It's fufu. Yeah, it's fufu. Yeah. That's what, That's what, what makes you happy as a person? What makes me happy? Ah, hmm. uh, well, mm, I, 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 I am a church goer, and I try to be a follower of God. So I listen to most some of selected you know, religious programs and so on. Selected, not the numerous ones, buy this, bring this, that, no, I don't mm -hmm. like, yeah. When, and then uh, gospel numbers, they inspire me, the words and so on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I tune to my radio or TV and they are singing, those I can, I sing with them and so on, listen to radio and find conversation. Hmm? Yeah, if we meet myself, my wife and my kids, and then we can laugh over certain things. Yeah, as I said, I, I, I myself, <laughs> I have humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm <laughs> telling my stories, I have a, 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 a grandchild in America. Uh, Eleven. She, he turned eleven not long ago. But any time I spoke to him on the phone, you like <laughs> me, me to tell a story. Mm. Have, have you prepared one for us <laughs> today and so on? Yeah. So I'm always fishing for stories mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. But mm, no particular things just to make me happy, but just to do the right thing. Mm. Yeah. If I don't offend anybody, I just do the right thing mm? and make friends with people. It, it makes me happy mm -hmm. because when there is friendliness, mm, you don't offend anybody, nobody offends you, the right thing is that, then a very cordial atmosphere, yeah. you know, is maintained. Mm? Mm. And then you are all happy. But if there is this enmity, you don't talk to that one, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, then you become lonely. And if I'm not talking to somebody, I get worried. That makes I, you sad. Yes, I want to get closer so that we open up mm. and do everything together. That's how I think I feel, yeah. So. I, 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 as I sit down, I can't name anybody. He's my enemy. Mm. I don't like him, and so on. And no, no. I get all the things I like in life. Mm. Wrapping up, yeah. Mr. Samiaboa, are there lessons you'd want to share with us, especially for the youth? Well, the youth today are in a hurry for everything, mm? but with patience, mm? Mm. with patience. They should try to be patient about things. They shouldn't rush. And uh, they should always pause. Hmm? Not to rush and do things which they will regret later on. Mm. Of late, mm, the chaos that goes round in schools and universities and these distractions and so on, murders, they worry man. Hmm? 
If you hear them, you are not happy. Hmm? You are not very happy. Because sometimes I, I say, ah, so people are aspiring to grow higher, hmm. learned, academically, and so on. Hmm. So if you get first degree, second degree, your doctorate, and so on, what do you do with it? If you are learning to come up one day to be leaders, and then you aim at destruction, hmm? we are all allowed in schools and so on to demonstrate. When we don't feel happy about certain things, yes, the law allows it. You can, but the same law, does it allow you to destroy the things you use to learn and so on? Your buildings, your equipment, your cars, and so on. For who to provide the money to replace them? I, I, I feel so bad about that. Mm. And it is the youth. It is the youth. They have a problem. Mm? Mm. They have a problem. So what would you propose? What should they do? In short, an uncle of mine, this uncle who <laughs> trained me right from the beginning at Ekropong, he was at Legon one time, when Legon was a university college. I think the last principal was one uh, Dr. R. H. Stoughton. And he said he delivered a, a lecture on something, and he used an expression and said, one mark of academic discipline mm -hmm. is Tolerance. You must try to be tolerant. Don't be in haste to do things you ought not to do. Hmm? Now, when we were in school eh, at Premper College, I was a youth, <laughs> eh, and then we hooted at a dining hall prefect. So we were <laughs> giving lines <laughs> to, to, to as punishment. Yeah, mm. they said we should write four hundred lines each, <laughs> and it went by this. He said, uh, all that they were trying to tell us is that uh, just book knowledge alone <laughs> without character development mm. amounts to nothing. A mm. liberal education mm. without the fundamental idea of character development mm. amounts to nothing. Yeah. If you acquire just book knowledge, but yet you have no manners, everything about you, nil. <laughs> yeah. Then what is education? Hmm? Mm. Yeah. So mm. these are some of the things I want uh, my brothers and sisters to keep to. Hmm? So Le finally, Mr. Yeboa, yeah. how would you want to be remembered? <laughs> Just the, the, the do it right man. I want things to be done right. Hmm? Yeah. Do it right. And then. Uh, I also think of my country a lot. I want all of us to get united, embrace ourselves, mm. Mm, and bear ourselves in such a way that if the country mm, mm. is lifted up, it isn't one man's work. All of us Collectively. should say hooray. Yes, mm. we all contributed to this. Yeah, But uh, in life, I just want to be remembered <laughs> as that quiet gentleman who wants things done the way they should be done and at the right time. Mm? Yeah. Mr. Samyabua, thank you so much. We are grateful You're to welcome. have you on our program. You're welcome. So, so on it. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, too. Mm, thank thank you. you, too. You're welcome. You have brightened my hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is how we wrap up on today's program, Legends of Our Time. My guest has been Mr. Sam Yeboa, the veteran broadcaster. My name is Gifty AG. Thank you so much for watching. We'll come your way same time next week. Until then, bye for now.